so so you're based out of Silicon Valley, yes? I, yeah, think I live in, in Seattle now, actually. Oh, you live in Seattle. Okay. So Intellectual Ventures Lab, is that in Silicon Valley yep, or do you have Seattle. a place in Seattle as well? Uh, that's in Seattle. And I, I helped start the lab in 2007. I've been working there ever since until this last year. I left to work on some new projects. Okay, very cool. So question for you would be California, okay? Yeah. Every year... California faces wildfires. It happens mm -hmm. over and over and over and over again. Yeah. You would assume all the brains in California, all the Silicon Valley brains would be able to figure out a way to come out with an invention to prevent these fires from happening over and over again. Two-part question for you. One, is the conversation being had behind closed doors? And two, if not, why not? Well, uh, the closed doors you're talking about I mean, I, I presume uh, I wasn't invited, um, but I also think the, um, you know, people, you just got to look at incentives, like who's incentivized to really work on that problem. And, and the truth is, you know, it, it's a the kind of problem that really doesn't, that's the whole reason we have a government is to take on problems that are bigger than people can really do individually or that companies could do. And so, but unfortunately, our, you know, we haven't incentivized our governments to, to take on those problems. So we have a real problem there. And, and again, you're kind of out of my jurisdiction. I don't think it's a, a, I mean, it's not a technical problem in the sense that, you know, we know what to do to prevent those types of fires, right? Um, what but do we do? have to be proactive about it. But you're saying we know what to do. What, what, yeah. what do we do with those fires? No, we prevent them from happening in the first place by and we by, by doing you know forestry management and the kinds of things that you do to you have to have some fires is the truth like you know the, the these forests were you know sort of evolved to get burned occasionally so you know you got to do it but you could do it in a managed way which is important when you have human lives at stake so i'm making stuff up here but i think really the right answer is you know humans have to look and say okay we chose to live in these danger zones. We tried to make it, make it so there was never a fire. That's obviously not going to work. So we need to manage it and do it proactively. And that just hasn't been happening in California. It's certainly happening in lots of other places where we're doing proper forestry management and things like that. It's interesting what you said there. You said that the proper incentive needs to be in there for somebody to want to work on it. We don't have that right now in place. When you say incentive, do you mean incentives for entrepreneurs and innovators to do it or incentives on the government side? I mean, you know, it would be really great. So for instance, I know inventors who've come up with ways of combating forest fires, you know, rapid response uh, where they can go in and do much better than, than we can right now, you know, deploying water and things to dampen the, the spread of fires. Um, but there's not really a market for that. No one pays for it in advance. They don't want to, <laughs> so no one wants to spend a dime on, on the fire problem until there's a fire. And at that point, it's too late. And so we just go through that cycle every year. That's really the reason you want governments at all is to do the things that the market can't do well, right? So the idea is that the government should say, okay, there's no market dynamic incentivizing us to fix this problem. Um, so we're gonna go, uh, you know, so we're gonna go invest in that, right? That's why you want your government investing in like diagnostics for, pandemics. <laughs> you know, that's why you want them investing in things like, you know, forestry management. That's why you want them investing in the lots of these things. I, I have an invention that we worked on at the lab. That's the simplest thing we ever invented. And it's a way to suppress a hurricane, right? It costs way less than the damage from a Katrina or some other hurricane, but no one will ever do it because there's no business model, right? So, and, and so plan A should probably be like, move out of New Orleans and get away from the coast. <laughs> no one's doing that. So plan B is probably also like move away from the coast. Plan C or D should be like, well, let's try and reduce the, the impact that these hurricanes have and the loss of life and the property damage and everything that comes from that. Zero government interest in that, right? And there's no way that you could get a, make a business out of it because of what's called the free rider problem. So free rider means, you know, uh, if one insurance company pays for it, all the other ones get it for free. 
right? So it's too expensive for the one to do it. So that's where you want governments to say, okay, we're going to all pitch in and make this happen. And that's, that's why we give money to the government to do those things. But it seems like in a lot of cases, they're not doing it. <laughs> so there would be, so there would be no incentive for, there's not a business model for it, right. because if you were to be able to prevent a hurricane, how do yep. you go collect the money? Who does, who pays you the money to be able to yep. go? To what there entrepreneur? you go. There so you go. maybe the entrepreneur, what if the entrepreneur had the business model, a guy like yourself who says you can fix it and through government grants of cities and states that are affected by it, yep. Florida, Louisiana, Texas, let's just say Galveston, Louisiana, you know, Florida, that whole area yeah. that gets hit every year. How about if they were to fund it with a program like that for an entrepreneur, an innovator like yourself or an investor like yourself? Yep, that would be great, except that humans are only good at doing things they've seen done before. So a government especially is like a, think of a government as like being a very, very poorly performing human. <laughs> like the slowest, dumbest guy you know. That's a government. And, the, and so, or at least in America. So you have to presume that they're not gonna be able to imagine something new. 